Hey there, this is Ryan from Bigger Tattooing, making another video today. And we're going to be talking about the placement of tattoos and the rule of thirds for that. Rock and roll. Okay, now that's over with. Rule of thirds for placement. This is fun. Um, most people don't actually think about large scale design this way, and so maybe we can put this in more of a intermediate to advanced placement type of stuff, but it's, it's always good to think about, especially if you're gonna be doing large scale piecework pieces on people, like large patch, patchwork sleeves, or you, know, you just do a whole bunch of you know, small tattoos. And we're trying to think about how best to place them on the body to make a congruent image when it's done. Now, most of you, who do tattoos or clients, you may have you know, scoped through social media or online looking at pictures and one of the things that you notice is that you'll see this wicked sleeve and when it comes time to the hand, there's a rose or a skull or some name on it. It's just universal, right? And same with the elbow. We'll oftentimes see an image that looks like two distinct different parts to a tattoo and they leave the elbow out of it. This is never taken into account when they actually get into it, especially with like smaller patchwork top type of uh, tattoos. When it comes time to put everything together, people will do like, you know, those little asterisk stars or smoke or something else. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense. And I think it's because when we're dealing with tattoos, we're always thinking about the image in a 2D plane rather than how it's going to fit on the body. And we've had a couple videos that we've made about placement, which I don't know, I'll put a link here. Um, about that stuff and when when we get into actually doing the placing we're always trying to find the best fit for the piece rather than fitting the piece to the body right so more often than not if you've done sleeves and this is gonna be our example for today you've seen something that kind of looks like this right a sleeve outline mapping stencil template thing and this is great if what you're wanting to do is put something on the body that is going to have a totem pole like effect. All we're gonna be doing is focusing all of our detail just on the outside so that we can maximize the amount of area to put in as much detail as we want. And this, this works really good, but more often than not, I think when we start thinking of the arm in this flat two dimensional space, we're not actually thinking about positioning of the people in relation to the design, right? You're gonna have a different feeling from the design if you're standing face to face with somebody and you can catch something maybe that looks cool here or if you're standing behind and there's something that you can see from behind and each one of those spots is gonna interact with the person or the viewer from a distance and it's gonna influence how they're actually gonna be thinking about interacting with that design and that person. So when we get into placement, there's actually a lot of different ways that we can think about utilizing that section of the body and start creating in different ways to interact with that environment. So, this is the thirds. We can take different ripped down, folded out, stencil mapping you know, templates of different parts of the body and they're going to look different depending on where we start, right? If we have the inside of the arm which is this one, the outside of the arm, or if we work off the front of the arm, each one of those mappings is gonna look a bit different and each one of them is gonna have a different flowability to them. So there's a different way to connect different aspects of the design. Now, if we start just from the front of the arm and we're building the image, we're having to work with the curves of the body more naturally to try and tie and connect things together rather than just totemizing things, right? If we work on the inside of the arm and we're gonna be building a design that's gonna be coming up, that actual fit and flow and directionality that we're gonna see off of it changes as well. So when we start breaking down the actual like meat of our designs, we, we start finding spaces and shapes and areas where certain things may fit better than others. And everyone's biology is different, so we should start looking at it differently, right? More often than not, when I'm working with a client, I'm thinking about those four distinct spaces, right? We have the front, the back, the inside, and the outside. And when we think about a tattoo like that, we're making it 3D, right? And if it's, if it's 3D, we're gonna have to put something that we want people to look at in each one of those quadrants. There's gonna have to be something on the front that's gonna work, right? Like more, we, when you see people with like the patchwork sleeves, they always get that spot that's right here on the back of the arm or come up the front here or down the back where they put a dagger 
right? Because it's something thin and skinny because they didn't actually think about that aspect of the design process when they got into it. And realistically, maybe you could have taken this piece that sits really well in the center, shifted it back a little bit and taken up a large chunk of that and used the back as a transitional area rather than just a focal point that, you know, doesn't really make sense unless the person is contorting themselves a whole bunch to actually get it seen. So the rule of thirds with this, past all of this talk about placement, which you can watch the other video, it probably explain it better. When, when we're planning a large scale design, we're wanting to segment and break the body part that we're working on into manageable chunks. So usually what people will do is they'll take the standard stencil here and they end up splitting it into three like this. You have the top, the bottom, and the elbow. Now this can work, but what you've basically done is just segmented the body. You have two distinct pieces of work that you can develop and you're gonna try to connect them over a place that you don't like to tattoo. And this can be effective, but for larger scale designs that you wanna tell like a large story or something like that, this is not good. <laughs> it's just not, you, you, if somebody knows what they're doing and they're gonna stand back and look at the tattoo, they're gonna see this segment and they're gonna be like, oh, maybe this section was done five years before this one, they're gonna age at different rates. It's never gonna look like it comes together. So you're always having to take these spots that you maybe don't want to test you or don't how, know how to deal with, and you're gonna to have to start using them right off the hop. This is where we're gonna be building our design, right? So, on average, when I'm working with people, I'm gonna be taking the medial point on the forearm, where the flexors, extensors overlap, right? Because we know when we get past that part on the arm, we're gonna have the most torsional stress. I'm gonna add that into the part just below where the bicep flexor is. Right, so I've got this large chunk here, one that's here, and then from midline on the bicep up is three distinct spaces. And when we're looking at this, we've broken it into thirds with that placement using this traditional stencil and design, and it makes it a lot easier to try and actually like fit things into it because now you're having to negotiate that space. You're forced to, right? And even if you're gonna be doing a single figure where we have a head, body, arms, legs coming down, we know that we're gonna be segmenting that character in and of itself and whatever motion that it's doing to fit each one of those spaces and to have some type of focal point inside of it that somebody is gonna be attracted to that's gonna utilize each one of those four quadrants. If we have a hand here, a head here, right? We've dealt with the front and the top, which is gonna be the outside. If the body's coming around, maybe something spinning around towards the inside, a foot down here on the inside, inside of the arm, maybe something pulling off the back for the back. You, you, you're able to fill and populate that space with stuff that works, right? So <clears throat> what happens if we turn away from the standard traditional arm, you know, template? <laughs> And we go with one of the alternative ones where we're gonna be building the image off of the inside or the front slash back of the arm. The same thing is gonna happen, but we're gonna to have to segment these things a bit differently, right? Rather than working on perpendicular lines running off that totemized you know, alignment of our work, if we're working towards the front and the back and we're wanting to build our focal points on those, we're gonna to have to turn and start following the musculature. More often than not, if we're gonna be building a design that has a very strong focal point on the front, like somebody who's really just big and beefy, right? And we have a nice wide space on the front of their arm to work with, we're gonna start turning and following the musculature. This, this is where the 3D figure eight starts to come in. A lot of people like to use. Where you're bending and turning around those spaces, following the tricep line at the top, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And loosening it up as it gets down to the bottom. This third is automatically gonna be split the same way as this. We're gonna be taking from the ditch and moving up towards, I used blue again, oops, up towards the tricep line, and then we're gonna be going from the wrist to the medial point of the arm. And we split it into three very distinct sections that is gonna be following that musculature, right? We still have very large open spaces where we can focus each one of the focal points from the quadrant that we've defined and be able to easily place them there. It's just simple, right? Look at the body as 3D. And when you go to do a mapping, before you even place a stencil to start doing the artwork, get the client to come in and draw just shapes in different spaces, right? And you can see how things will populate in the line and you can get past those tricky points, like the elbow that no one likes to tattoo. Now, when we get to the inside of the arm coming down, it's a bit different, right? Because we'll have a flat, broad space, and then we have a lot of rotation because it's a rounded space on the arm. Same thing is gonna occur with this. We're gonna be taking the points, and kind of running them almost opposite of these, right? If these are gonna be coming down straight. We're gonna make sure that we're gonna be segmenting the body outside of where that flat plane is. Cut it right in half. Right? 
two very distinct spots. They're going to be focusing on the front and the back, especially if the inside of the arm is going to be, you know, whatever. Uh, tattooed with a single inch. hinge. As soon as we split it, and we'll take our elbows and cut. <clears throat> able to pass the elbows again in the ditch. We're able to have something on the inside of the arm that's going to be able to roll up towards each point of the shoulder. And with this one, we're actually going to be focusing a lot more on that wrist transition of things coming up. When things are split straight down the arm with this, I know it's a bit more than the actual thirds we're going to be going, but we're actually going to be looking at two distinct possibilities with this. And it's a bit different way of looking at it compared to this easy way, right? We're going to have our third on the light side of the skin, the third on the dark side of the skin. And when we start building an initial image off the inside, this is like when people start a sleeve here versus on the outside, it's something that's usually really personal, right? To, to expose that tattoo to people, you have to become extremely vulnerable. You have to be like, here, let me open up, you know, and if I'm nervous and have anxiety in public, it's a little bit less likely to happen. She might be afraid of getting stabby stabbed or something, but you're having to design this in a way that you can start mitigating how much effort that they're going to have to put in to get to the things that really mean to them. Well, I mean a lot to them, right? The spots that are down low, they can put things that they don't worry about the rest of the world seeing. And when you start getting really up close towards like their heart area, center line their chest, whatever chakra that is, they're going to have to put in more effort to actually get it seen, right? So we're splitting those things. So the dark light segment where we're going through this is just because this part of the body on the back side of it is always going to see less sun less work, less, you know, I don't know, environmental factors that are going to cause the tattoo to age more rapidly. So we're going to try and put darker things where it's going to be exposed more, lighter where it won't be. And this is actually kind of the same for each one of these, right? You're going to have to take those into account. Anyways, that's, that's another video I'll get into with aging and melanin and stuff. Just don't worry about it right now. But anyways, these segmented lines are something that you can use. Now, why didn't I put an angular line on the outside traditional template of an arm? Because when you start segmenting the arm along the tricep and then coming down off of the backside of the, the forearm elbow joint, right? You end up with these two completely unusable areas. They're pitched together, they're pinching, they, 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 they experience a ton of stress, right? Compressive and, and elastic stresses. And it, it's very difficult to try and attach a large scale piece that's gonna be following these things that actually negotiates the elbow well. So instead of thinking about it moving along flow lines that fit with a musculature, just look at the body as three distinct placements and you can break it into thirds and it'll be more manageable when you're trying to create something that's large. Right? Just make sure you mark out the elbows and ditch so you don't tattoo them. Unless you're really comfortable with it, like a few of my friends and I am, and just get it done. Anyways, there's the placement rule of thirds. Hopefully that's not too convoluted. Let us know what you think. Like, subscribe, something, something, something. Buy us a coffee with a link. And uh, also let us know in the comments if you have another video that you want to watch. We can start getting more complex this year, like right on this, I have another whiteboard right here. And this is all of the coil machine physics that we're working out. So if you're looking forward to that, let me know as well. Anyways, I'm done yammering. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.